This is such a dumb thing to say. And much like his comments about pride and kink at pride and all that, he, he just casually says something extremely stupid and then turns around and acts like shocked and chagrined when a bunch of people on the left call him out for it. And that's exactly what happened here. So uh, let's take a look at, at this clip real quick before we get into people's reactions and Vosh's reactions to their reactions. If we pulled out, if we allowed these countries to destabilize, you know what would happen within 10 years? Guaranteed, you know what would happen within 10 years? I bet you more than anything. America pulls out with no exit strategy, no long-term plan for supporting these countries. These countries fail and they turn into, I mean, we're talking Cambodia level. We're talking fields of corpses. China will come in with boots on the ground and fix their problems, and they'll be Chinese vassal states for the next century. <laughs> yeah, so this is a, you know, obviously terribly cringy, um, you know, clip. I don't think anyone can deny that. That sounds exactly like the kind of line of logic you would hear on mainstream media when they're advocating for us to stay in a country like Afghanistan forever. And again, uh, it's these kind of talking points, which of course are going to trigger people on the left because that's the kind of bullshit narrative they're fed from mainstream media and all these dishonest actors that are honestly in favor of, you know, a forever war kind of situation going on in the Middle East as we have constructed. Um, so yeah, anyway, a lot of people called out Vosh for that. Uh, as we can take a look here, um, several people, including Nathan J. Robinson of Current Affairs, actually waded into this uh, in the comments. Also, Mike from PA says, holy shit, laugh my ass off. Every country we occupy had a secular leftist movement that we intentionally crushed and installed a right-wing authoritarian government. Down here, Nathan J. Robinson uh, gets involved and says, Exit strategy is a piece of empty rhetoric deployed to justify endless occupation. The reason you know is that there is never any feasible strategy actually proposed. Empty words that help you sound smart and pragmatic without having a realistic alternative except endless war. So absolutely correct on Nathan's part. Yeah, and he tries to compare it to like what was going on in uh, Cambodia as if the United States didn't destroy all of Southeast Asia. And that's why all fucking the Kerma Rouge rose. And, and not only that, uh, uh, I don't know for sure about this, but I do think the CIA was uh, partially responsible for uh, uh, what happened in, uh, in in Cambodia. And certainly, obviously, the broader U.S. military presence was responsible for that. But um, anyway, just a complete horseshit analogy. And that's what Vosh does, it seems like, a lot of the time. I'm not super familiar with Vosh. I haven't watched him as extensively as Gavin. Like, I watched clips of him the other day when he was debating Jackson Hinkle, and he, like, got really triggered and all that kind of shit. But... Um, it seems like his big thing is he wants to bring a historical analogy that either he doesn't understand or he's manipulated to fit his argument in a way that makes it like historically like not 100 percent accurate. And he uses that to fortify his argument uh, because he thinks that you don't know about what happened in Cambodia. Like, I've never heard of the K Kerma Rouge. Like, he's the only one that read Sam Powers book. Like, everybody fucking read that book that's in the left space, bro. Like, you know what I mean? And it's just like a, a weird flex that he's like trying to throw something like weird like that in. And it's like, you're actually not as insightful as you think you are. You're kind of missing the mark, actually. And you're making yourself look like a dumb fucking piece of shit. But anyway, I'll stop. Roasting. Let's take a look at, like I said, Vosh's reaction to people's reaction. Uh, he seemingly got pretty triggered. So again, let's take a look. I got canceled again. I was tweeting, you know, just having a good time, as I always do on Twitter. And somebody was like, uh, an out of context clip of yours has gotten 100,000 views from tankies or something. And you know what? I'm actually going to be real with you. You may not believe me, but I actually have not watched the clip that I've gotten canceled for. It's at 320 something thousand views now. Here we go. We're three seconds in. Okay. Let's see. Now, a, a weak man might look at this and think, oh God, what have I done? What did I say? But since I know that everything that I say is based in red pilled, yeah, here Jimmy Dore retweeted, of course, Kayla Moppin, nothing but the, the brightest minds. Let's go! I think Ian Miles Chong also tweeted this. If we pulled out, if we allowed these countries to destabilize, you know what would happen within 10 years? Guaranteed, you know what would happen within 10 years? I bet you more than anything. America pulls out with no exit strategy, no long term plan for supporting these countries. These countries fail and they turn into. I mean, we're talking Cambodia level. We're talking fields of corpses. China will come in with boots on the ground and fix their problems, and they'll be Chinese vassal states for the next century. If we pulled... Wait, that's... 
canceled for being based and correct pilled once again. Honestly, completely 100% true. The funny thing is, I see, look, I think this is a fan of mine. He's not arguing for, wait, is this Nathan Robinson? Oh no, Nathan Robinson disagrees with us. Uh oh. Oh no. Not Nathan Robinson. So this person says, He's not arguing for the U.S. to remain in other countries. He's arguing against pulling out without an exit strategy, like he even mentions in the clip. I understand the U.S. is imperialistic. We can't just leave without some plan. Let's be realistic. And then Nathan Robinson says, um, exit strategy is a piece of empty... By the way, I just wanted to interject real quick and say that most of these countries, they just want us to fucking leave. They don't really necessarily give too much of a shit about the exit strategies. They've made it pretty clear for a lot of time now, many years, that they just want us the fuck gone. One more thing to add before we start playing this again. Uh, is also the weird China fear-mongering that constantly seems to come from Vosh. It's like, oh, God, we have to be there so China won't be there, guys, because we have to have U.S. hegemony. That's what he's saying in this clip. That is the full-on implication. He is cheerleading U.S. hegemony because he's saying, if we're not here manipulating these people, controlling them without their permission, their consent, this fucking anarcho-syndicalist, my fucking ass. Okay, we're supposed to be over there providing a government that these people do not fucking want because otherwise it'll end up like Cambodia, which we fucked up! Rhetoric deployed to justify endless occupation. The reason you know is that there's never any feasible strategy actually proposed. Empty words that help you sound smart and pragmatic without having a realistic alternative except endless war. Oh no! That's a really stupid talking point. Uh-oh. That's unfortunate. So the... F the so yeah, once again, not addressing Nathan's criticism at all, basically just saying, oh man, Nathan doesn't like me, and I, he made a really good point about why I sound stupid. The funny thing is, is that this, uh, this video uh, uh, propped up like the same day that the Taliban made huge surges after Biden started to pull out U.S. troops in Afghanistan. Um, like, th this happened like at the same time Fortifying your argument with Fox News talking points is always a great way to go, Vosh. I really enjoy. I, I really think that that's the way to do it. Let's let's get all of our reporting about what's going on on the ground in Afghanistan from Fox News because that's not fucking biased at all. Like, are you fucking kidding me, bro? This is what you're resorting to. Oh, we have to stay in Afghanistan. Who's on my team? Fox News. Let's rock. The Taliban is surging, bro. We got to get out here. Yeah, and also. Keep in mind that this article would exist no matter what the surrounding context was. If the U.S. decided to pull out of Afghanistan under pretty much any fucking circumstance, this article would be written not just on Fox News, but probably on CNN and USA Today or whatever the fuck. All these other mainstream outlets are all going to pump out this kind of bullshit. Started to pull out U.S. troops in Afghanistan. Um... Like th this happened like at the same time I that the that the universe was proving me correct, you know. Jen Perelman, hold on. We I think that it's we're gonna have to burn some bridges here. I disagree with Vosh and military occupation in the Middle East. These countries became destabilized due to our presence there in the first place. When did I say otherwise? Well, wait. First of all. All right, so we don't have to keep watching much more of this because he continues to just get triggered over the fact that people are, you know, accurately calling him out and analyzing the situation. Uh, but again, despite the fact that Vosh thinks he's being interpreted uncharitably, uh, I will just say, you can't just say dumbass shit, put it out there, and then expect people to not comment on it. it like, obviously, anyone else that had said that too would also be called out. It, you sound like a fucking neocon on MSNBC. You sound like, Someone that is defending the imperialist status quo of our country's occupation of developing countries with uh, that happen to be resource rich places like Afghanistan, places like Syria, uh, which you called someone a you know Holocaust denier for questioning the state line on. So you know it, it really is crazy how much he's seemingly receding into this totally mainstream. Like I read the New York Times and the Guardian mindset. That's really what I get from this. But I think what uh, makes Vosh's situation extra funny, and now we've seen this over and over again, like especially with the whole kink at pride discourse, um, is that he'll just say something really stupid, something really tone deaf that almost sounds like it might be coming from like a right winger or something, and then he'll and then he'll turn around and like I said, he'll like shocked and chagrined that people are like 
what the fuck? You know, when he says something like that, it's like, what do you expect, man?